Okay, let's start today's lecture. A stroma, as we all know, is the matrix of chloroplast in which thylakoids are arranged one above other to form granum. Grana are interconnected with the help of stromal lamellae. The reason of thylakoid membrane that pairs with the thylakoid membrane of other thylakoid that reason is called appressed reason as we see in this figure that the membrane of one thylakoid is pressing the membrane of other so reason from here to here that is appressed reason on the other hand as we see Thylakoid membranes are exposed to stroma. These reasons are called non appressed reason. And as thylakoid membrane exposes itself to stroma, that reason is non appressed reason. So, can you tell me? This stromal lamellae will be a press reason or non appressed reason. Obviously, it is a non appressed reason. Now, let's see how thylakoid complexes like light harvesting complexes, PS2, PS1, and ATP synthesis enzyme that is ATP synthase how they are arranged in the thylakoid membrane. In a press reason, we find light harvesting complex LHC2 and photosystem 2. Similarly, in non press reason, we have light harvesting complex 1 and photosystem 1 and ATP synthesis. This lollipop structure is known as ATP synthase which is involved in the synthesis of ATP molecules. So never write ATP synthase as ATP synthetase. The moment you will do this mistake that means you are making a synthase a uh, enzyme that breaks ATP molecule. So never write synthetase. Always write synthase when the system is involved in the synthesis of ATP molecules. So what we see here that there is a particular space for these complexes. Light harvesting complexes 2 and PS2 they are arranged in the Appress reason and light harvesting complexes 1 and photosystem 1 and ATP synthase they are arranged in the non appressed but there are some complexes which are present in both the reason as we see here this uh, protein complex is called cytochrome b6f and this distribution of thylakoid complexes in the thylakoid membrane is called lateral heterogeneity or spatial separation. Spatial means with space. There is a different space for light harvesting complexes 2 or PS2 that is appressed reason and for these complexes they are arranged in the non appressed reason. Let's see the various components of photosystem 2. So they have CP43, CP47 that is a chlorophyll protein complexes which are the core antenna molecules of photosystem 2. There is a chlorophyll molecule pigment 680 that receives light of 680 nanometer. Fufitin molecule that receives electron which is ejected from p680 fiofitin is a chlorophyll a molecule in which magnesium ion has been replaced with hydrogen 
there are two important proteins d1 and d2 proteins they have two important qa and qb sites these are the two quinones which is which receives electron uh, sequentially now there is an important complex which is present at the luminal side that purifies our atmosphere and due to this complex photolysis of water takes place and oxygen is released and that important OEC that is oxygen evolving complex is present on D1 protein. Photosystem 1 components let's see uh, it has CP1 as we see here CP43 and CP47 reaction center p700 it receives light of 700 nm first electron acceptor a0 is like a chlorophyll a molecule a1 skewnon fes protein that includes fes x fes a and fes b another important multi-protein complex that is cytochrome B6F that is composed of cytochrome B6 and cytochrome F. It has an additional redox component risky iron sulfur protein. Risky is the scientist that discovered iron sulfur protein. Now these three complexes are static. They are embedded completely in the thylakoid membrane and cannot change their place so how electrons are carried so for that we need three electron carriers plastoquinone plastocyanin and ferredoxin plastoquinone is lipophilic in nature and it carries electron from ps2 to cytochrome b6f it is lipophilic in nature that's why it easily moves between these complexes next is plastocyanin which is a carbon containing protein that gives it a, a blue color it is present at the luminal surface of thylakoid membrane it carries electron from cytochrome b6f to, uh, to photosystem 1. ferredoxin protein that is a iron sulfur protein which is soluble in a stroma that takes electron from the stromal phase of the photosystem 1 and it reduces NADP to NADPH. Now how these thylakoid complexes are in thylakoid membrane? Let's see. This is the thylakoid membrane. These are the light harvesting complexes, complex 2 and 1, which are associated with their respective photosystems. First, we see the organization of photosystem 2. There is a protein that is D1, D2 protein. They have QA and QP site, reaction center P680 pheophytin the primary electron acceptor cp43 and cp47 are the antony molecule of ps2 oxygen evolving complex present on the d1 protein and that is present on the luminal phase of ps2 and it is rich in manganese ion and chlorine ion. Similarly, in photosystem 2, the reaction center is pigment 700. It has uh, A molecules like A0, A1 and other iron sulfur centers. Another important uh, multi-protein complex, cytochrome B6F b6 b6f iron sulfur centers discovered by risque there are three 
electron carriers plastoquinone plastocyanin and ferrodoxin that we uh, also studied in the previous slide this is the precise location of these uh, electron carriers as we discussed earlier the plastoquinone carries electron uh, from ps2 to cytochrome B6F blastocyanin, which is present at the luminal face of cytochrome B6F, and it carries electron from uh, this complex to PS1. And ferrodoxin, which is present on the stromal side of PS1, and it reduces NADP to NADPH. This portion that uh, divides chloroplast interior into stroma and thylakoid lumen. Now, let's see how electrons traveled in a non cyclic manner. This is the electron which has the low energy, electron at high energy level, then reduction potential. So as light strikes on the photosystem 2 and photosystem 1st, they eject their electrons. First accepted by pheophytin and here it is accepted by A0 which is a chlorophyll molecule. From pheophytin, it moves to QA, QB, then other redox component and it reaches to cytochrome B6F and from there it moves to plastocyanin and from here it is given to photosystem 1 which has already ejected a electron which is received by its primary acceptor that moves to A1, FEX, FESA and FESB the iron sulfur centers and ultimately they are reached to uh, ferrodoxin which is present on the stromal surface of the PS1. This ferrodoxin with the help of FNR enzyme F stands for ferrodoxin and for nicotinamide adenine diphosphate R is the reductase. It receives NADP takes two proton and two electron and it converts into NADPH. So what we see here that electron which was ejected from PS1 was coming back but the electron which was released from P6AT is not coming back. So here there is a generation of electron hole or there is a deficit of electron at PS2 or P6AT which compels water molecule to photooxidize to produce oxygen, proton and electron and these two electrons are taken by P6AT and again light resumes the non-cyclic electron flow. So why this flow is, is known as non-cyclic because electron which is released from P680 is not coming back which is ultimately received by NADP to produce NADPH. Now what is cyclic electron flow? And I ask why does it takes place? So assume a situation where in all NADP molecules have been reduced to NADPH through non-cyclic electron flow. In such condition, there is no availability of NADP molecules anymore. Until unless NADPH molecules reduces CO2 into carbohydrate, then only free NADP will come in the system. Till then, NCP will halt itself or PS2 will stop for a while and in such condition, cyclic electron flow takes place. Wherein, 700 nm light energy is received by PS1 
and two electrons are released which are accepted by chlorophyll like molecule chlorophyll like molecule a0 and from here that moves to different redox components as we have discussed earlier and from here that moves to fredoxin and from fredoxin it is uh, given to a recently discovered protein that is pgr5 known as proton gradient regulation protein that protein reduces pq to pqh2 and two electrons are given to cytochrome b6f complex and two protons are released in the thylakoid lumen further electrons are received by plastocyanin and this electrons which were ejected from the ps2 ultimately come home so what we see here that this electron flow is cyclic so far we have studied about non cyclic traveling of electron and cyclic electron traveling but how these traveling of electron is related to atp formation so this formation of atp through non cyclic traveling of electron powered by light energy is known as photophosphorylation friends so far we only talked about electron traveling but we haven't talked about what happened to protons let's understand that thing here this is the thylakoid membrane that separates stroma and thylakoid lumen ps2 complex ps1 complex cytochrome b6f and atp synthase electron carriers and non cyclic electron traveling takes place as we have studied earlier fredoxin receives electron from stromal surface of ps1 and nadp is reduced to nadph and due to this activity photolysis of water takes place at ps2 protons are accumulated in the thylakoid lumens now we are talking about protons so protons can only come through plastoquinone from stroma to thylakoid lumen or from photolysis of water so there are two sources of proton accumulation when electron travels through non cyclic traveling one is from photolysis of water and one is from pqh2 or we will learn about q cycle in uh, coming videos a proton gradient establishes across the membrane and this is the requirement for the atp formation so this proton concentration which is higher in thylakoid lumen and lower in stroma so if we see there is a cyclic flow of electron from fredoxin electron comes to cytochrome b6f plus to cyanin and this this process is going on here cyclic then only pqh2 is the source to uh, accumulate protons in thylakoid lumen because there is no photolysis of water at ps2 because in cyclic electron traveling ps2 is stopped so when there is a proton gradient across the membrane we can say here that uh, uh, ph concentration in thylakoid lumen is lower because proton concentrations are higher so when protons can move through this atp synthase from thylakoid lumen to stroma 
then the energy is conserved in the form of ATP molecules. So ATP plus Pi and that plus is the energy that is conserved to produce ATP molecules. So this is the basis how cyclic and non-cyclic electron traveling is related to ATP formation. Let's uh, compare non-cyclic and cyclic electron flow. In non-cyclic electron flow, there is involvement of both the photosystem, photosystem second and photosystem one. There is only involvement of PS1. Electron which is ejected from PS2 is ultimately uh, received by NADP to produce NADP so it doesn't come back. But in cyclic flow, electron which is ejected from PS1 ultimately comes back. Since electron is not coming back, that creates a hole at PS2 site. But such condition doesn't appear at PS1 site. Because there is electron hole, there is electron deficit at PS2, which can only be filled by the photolysis of water and due to that oxygen is released. Such condition doesn't take space in cyclic electron flow because there is no electron deficit, there is no electron hole, there is no possibility of photolysis of water and there is no uh, release of oxygen. Fredoxin reduces NADP molecules to NADPH. Here Ft transfers electrons to plastoquinone by a recently discovered protein that is proton gradient regulation protein PGR5 and from here electron returns to PS1. And proton accumulation in thylakoid lumen there are two sources of that one is from photo splitting of water molecules as we had discussed in the previous slide and through the Q cycle. So one is from PQH2 and one accumulation is from photolysis of water. But when PS2 is not working, proton accumulation in cyclic electron flow will take place through PQH2. DCMU when we apply you can see my, my first video wherein we discussed about how DCMU acts or how that blocks electron flow and how that uh, involved in the killing of plants. So DCMU herbicides blocks electron flow between PS2 and PS1 but in non-cyclic flow DCMU doesn't block electron flow. ATP molecules are formed in both the electron traveling. So non-cyclic electron traveling or cyclic electron traveling involves ATP formation. That's why this two electron flow when studied in relation to ATP molecule formation are called non-cyclic photophosphorylation and cyclic photophosphorylation. So in next video uh, I will cover Q cycle and oxygen evolving complex in detail. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share or send your suggestions and feedback on my personal email address yasheshwar at the rate andc.du.ac.in. Till then, bye-bye.